They say you wouldn't download a car, but in this video I will show you how I downloaded and built this custom USB-C powered GameCube. To make it even more fancy, I installed the famous Pico mod to play all my legally acquired games. A Noctua fan mod for better cooling, we switch out the power LED from red to blue, new thermal pads, a new CR2032 adapter to switch the battery out in an instant, and of course we go from this big piece of old tech to a new USB-C powered solution to make it even easier to play on the go. So let's take a look at how I have done it and how you can do it too. I am Paul, this is my little mod shop and let's get started. Okay, story time. I purchased this lot of GameCube consoles back in November 2021 for around 44 euros and although I can't show you the listing due to some server issues, they have been declared as chunk items as they haven't been tested. From the one picture I had, I could make out that they were in a rough shape, but for that cheap of a price, I'm willing to take the risk of them not working. So I took the bid and I won it. And I received my package a while later, but honestly I forgot about them. And now that my Game Boy Mini camera video is finished, I thought about the next project I want to take on. So I scrapped through the GameCube lot and I found this little fella. As seen in the picture, it definitely has seen better days and I doubt that it has ever seen a cleaning wipe. The psych reel seems to be broken and listen, there's something rattling in there. That's not good at all. So let's give it the glow up it deserves. But first we need to test if the console is working in the first place. Uh, let's see. So I've plugged everything in. My controller is in, power is in. Um, here my cable to the TV is in. Then let's see if it works. And three, two, one. Ah, does it work? Oh, nice. Very good. Okay, now let's see. Uh, okay. Controller port seems to work. Um, up doesn't seem to work. Down doesn't seem to work. Um, okay. What is he doing? <laughs> That's weird. Uh, I can't get anywhere else in the menu. Ah, oh, now. Okay. Okay, but he's drifting to the right. Or is it left? So the disc lid won't open, like at all, even with force. The reset button is recessed and uh, stuck so that won't come up anytime soon so yeah so now we have confirmed that it's working actually but we still need to solve the mystery of why it's rattling in there i hope that it's just a shell and um yeah so let's crack it open clean it up and let's see how we get from there now the goal is to get it out of this broken shell and make it ready for the pico mod from web hdx but first, we need to tackle this problem. Oh no. Oh no. That's not good. So I guess this belongs right here. That's why the controller board hasn't worked at all. Shoot. Okay. So I don't know if you can see this, but the controller port PCB is broken. So now I have two pieces. So this controller port isn't working at all. Um, so I think we need to get another one from um, one of the other Game Boys I've got in this lot. So let's continue on with the disassembly. The heatsink can be a little hard to remove. So I apply some heat with my heat gun to help me out. That is 25 years old thermal paste and some dust bunnies too. Nice. But back to the Pico. Now installing is quite straightforward. With just 5 wires soldered to the motherboard, it is possible to install and load Swiss, a homebrew application which can also be used to play your totally legal acquired and backup games from an SD card. There are excellent resources and install guides on how to install the mod and I will link some down below. To make this section a little shorter, let's run all the main points down. First, we need to download all the necessary software from GitHub. 
Then we flash the firmware to the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Swiss software to this SD card. Next, we need to solder the Pico to the motherboard. Depending on what console revision you have, you may need to flip the motherboard around. To make the GameCube with the Swiss loader, we also need this here. This is a SD2 SP2 adapter that enables us to access the program through the serial port. There is also another option to access it through these memory card SD adapters, but I chose the serial port solution as it looks more clean and won't stick out of the console at all. Now let's shift our attention to the controller port PCB. I swapped it out with a PCB from the other GameCubes in the lot, and this one seems to be fully intact and working. This is the CR2032 battery, and we are going to desolder it to put in this adapter. This makes future battery swaps a lot easier, as we can just change them, no tools or soldering irons needed. I use a lot of flux and some soldering wick to make quick work of it. And while we're at it, let's not forget to desolder the old red LED, change it out for a blue one. And now on to the big attraction, the 3D printing part. I recently bought myself a new Bamboo Lab A1 Mini printer. This cuts my printing time in more than half over my old and trusty Ender 3 I used for years up to this point. I have made a collection of printables to easily find all the necessary parts, like this port cover here, so you can start printing your own GameCube at home. I also like to mention that this whole project wouldn't be possible without these awesome creators who are pouring their hearts into the work they are doing. So big thanks to Tessa Wolf, Blue Shell 3D, Retro Frog, Vanilla Frog, Sammy H, Retro Game Revival, and Kumare for making this project possible. And speaking of making things possible, let's have a quick word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. So I print every single piece of this GameCube on my own, but this obviously takes a lot of time and filament to get everything right. PCBWay offers a wide range of different 3D printing options, so you can upload the files on the website and let them do the rest for you. So no removing supports, no fiddling around with settings, just upload the files, get through the ordering process and wait for your stuff to arrive. It's that easy and straightforward. You could also print yourself a metal GameCube if you fancy that. They also offer a lot of other services like PCB manufacturing, injection molding, CNC machining and sheet metal fabrication. Oh, and let's not forget the exceptional customer service. I've ordered some PCBs a while ago and they helped me through the whole process of getting the pick and place file ready. As a real beginner when it comes to such advanced things, I'm happy that they didn't just expect to get things right on my end and being overall very communicative about what is happening at every step of the process. So big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and use the link in the description down below to get started with your next project. Now, let's get right back to the 3D printing. And let me tell you, this took a while. In total, I spent around 23 hours of printing time to get all the parts out. And this is with my new 3D printer, the A1 Mini. My old and the 3 would have needed around two to three times as long to complete this task. I call that a real time save. I chose to make the GameCube themed around my channel, so I used this blue color PLA from Overture and also tried out this super PLA, also from Overture. So basically the idea is to have the shell, top and bottom in blue and the rest, like the lid and the controller port, to be white. And the back panel is also white. Now after the cleanup from all the support material, I'm finally done printing and with a quick test fit I made sure everything goes well together. To put a finishing touch on the shell, I used a deburring tool to get all the sharp edges off. Depending on the material you have printed with, it is good practice to put a lighter to the edges of the shell as well. It makes the roughed up edge line disappear. Now onto the Noctua fan. This mod promises to make a GameCube way quieter than with the original fan in place and I can't wait to compare those two. And since we are already at the right place, we install the USB-C power mod. Simply unscrew the old board and in with the new one. Now if you have a problem with it and the GameCube won't turn on at all, make sure your USB-C power delivery adapter outputs 12 volt and 3 amps like this Uvrin one, not sponsored. So I just finished printing and everything else we need is here on the table too, so we can finally start the assembly to the new 3D printed cube. Let's start by putting those shields and screw guards in place. The screw holes aren't pre-threaded, so get them in the first time can be a little harder than usual. Just make sure to not overdo it, as the screw posts could potentially break off. Now with the motherboard in, I cut some fresh thermal pads to keep the chips cool. They vary in thickness, so it's best to buy a kit like the one I linked in the description. After I put the heatsink in place, I replaced the original memory card flaps with the ones I've printed. 
The controller port PCB fits right in the new part and before I install it in the cube, I need to place the RF shield with the disc reader on top of it. Now routing the cables to the Raspberry Pi Pico can be a little bit finicky with the RF shield. Now don't forget those little fellas. They live sandwiched between the controller PCB mount and the RF shield. After putting the screws all around the bottom shell in, it is time to get the fan mod in place. This part also has a mount for the Pico mod and let me secure it with two screws so it won't go anywhere. Next, we need to put the top shell together. I harvested a few parts from the original shell as they are molded in a nice durable ABS plastic and therefore are a little more precise as I could print them myself. The spring lock can be a little finicky to get into place but with a bit of trial and error it will work out. Now the power and reset button can be pushed right in place. And for the button that opens the lid, I had to quickly model one up myself, as I couldn't find one online. I measured everything with calipers and modeled it in a program called Plasticity. If you don't know, Plasticity is a really great new cut program that melts the lines between something like Fusion 360 and Blender. For me, it wasn't as complicated as Fusion. That's why I chose to learn Plasticity in the first place. I will link it down below so you can check it out yourself. Now with the lid working, I can finally put the top shell on and secure it with the four gambit screws. Or so I thought, because this is where the problem started to creep in. Well, this got out of hand really quickly. I spent the whole past day printing a new shell for my GameCube due to fitting issues I couldn't solve with the parts I've already printed. Especially the fan mount part for the Noctua one gave me such a headache that I finally gave in and will use the original part for it as I, to be completely honest, was too lazy to find a fitting part anywhere online or model one up by myself at this point. So after all of this I concluded, let's print it all new and with a new and reversed color scheme. Let's roll a quick montage of getting this whole mess cleaned up and back together and hopefully it works out this time. There it is. It's a 3D printed GameCube. And it fitted all together, which is wild to me. Oh, I'm so relieved that this time it worked out. So it's finally done. Or isn't it? 
Before we test everything in its full glory, we need to address that one most important Visual. component that is still missing, the GameCube jewel. There are few ways to go from here, like laser cutting one out of a piece of acrylic or simply buy one from fellow creators. But this wouldn't be a fully 3D printed GameCube if the jewel wasn't too. So again, I came up with a quick design, printed out my logo in the right dimensions, put the design in the 3D print, then I mixed up a little bit of epoxy resin to get that nice look like on the original jewel. There's still some bubbles on the surface, however they're not that noticeable from the top and they may make a new one in the future. And after it fully hardened out, I just used some double-sided tape to secure it in place. And now for the moment I've been waiting for the whole day, and it was a long day. Will everything working fully assembled? So I hooked the GameCube up with the USB-C power cable, um, video out is also in the TV, and um, I also checked if the SP SD2, SD2 to SP2 adapter is also seated in nicely. And um, yeah, now there's nothing left than just uh, push the power button. So let's see if it works in three, two, one. Is it working? Oh yeah, it is working, isn't it? Nice, this is awesome. Oh. I wish I could see. So let's see if the disk system also works because I haven't tested it before. Here is a copy of uh, Animal Crossing for the GameCube. I can hear the disk spinning. And I think there it is, isn't it? What is the sound? <laughs> oh, I'm so relieved that it works. You can even see the green light of the um, Pico. So I'm happy to report this system works too. Now let's roll some beauty shots of that GameCube. I'm really happy with the outcome of this project and finally have a GameCube that can boot into Swiss. And that's a pretty big deal for me because there are three major upgrades the Swiss mod enables me to do. One, I can finally back up all my GameCube games with a software called CleanRip, so I don't need to switch discs anytime I want to play different games. On the other hand, I really like that this mod doesn't swap out the original disc reader with an ODE, which stands for Optical Drive Emulator, as I like having the original way of playing games intact. Second reason is about playing international releases of games, like Gift Pier. It's a Japanese exclusive game that I really wanted to play for some time, and now I can. And the last major thing for me is having save data accessible from the SD card. This has so much potential for too many reasons I don't want to get into right now. But having save states available to continue playing on an emulator, for example, is such a win and it makes it so much more approachable to finish up all my missing GameCube games on my list. And with that being said, we are done for this video. I just wanted to say that I have a lot more videos and cool projects planned for the future. One of them involves this Super Nintendo motherboard and this 3D print. Hmm. So subscribe to not miss any of it. And while you wait, you may enjoy this video where I build a custom Game Boy Mini camera.